Hello everyone. What's up? What up? What up? Welcome back to another episode of RTF. The show where I kind of give you the behinds of the scenes. Behinds of the scenes. I give you the behind the scenes scoop on what I'm doing to try and be famous, if you will. I don't know if I would reach it, but this is definitely a stretch in the right direction. Today's squeak. Today's mini topic. Asking for a show gone wrong. One time over yonder ago. At this point in time, when I asked for to be considered for the show, I was already five years, more than five years, into doing comedy. And I've done shows in and out of town. I've definitely done more than 200 at this point. I run into situations where I will do a thing, and I'll be really good at that thing. But when brought up, my credibility is not acknowledged. In this instance, comedy. I've developed a stature. And I kind of thought to myself, I'm ready to start doing these bigger shows. So when I went to ask this nameless person for a show one time, or just to be considered for a show, Rather than giving me a yes or no answer, this person basically gave me in what I could describe in the simplest form as a fuck you, you suck. And that's really stuck with me for a while. As a performer, you want to get on every stage you possibly can to be not only consistent but to establish your presence amongst others. Now, I, like everyone else, also enjoy quality work. This goes for comedy, music, playing an instrument, drawing something. Consistency always doesn't necessarily mean quality. And even though I would say definitely in me performing, especially as of current, not having a car, just getting around when I can. I haven't been consistently everywhere, but I can say with confidence that when I get up on stage and do a show, it has been nothing less than great. And the people who have seen me perform know that. So, when I asked for this show, and it wasn't a crazy show to my knowledge, even after the show was done, it was just a show because I wanted to try my hand into bigger shows. And I, what I mean by that is there was a difference between an open mic and a show. Open mics are just kind of where you try things out. Um, if you're a comedian, that's where we kind of figure out the ingredients for a recipe, for our jokes. Our jokes are enchiladas. And open mics are where we kind of experiment with ingredients to figure out what do I want on this enchilada? What's gonna, you know, give it the spice? And shows are where you're seasoned. Shows are supposed to be where the enchiladas are now made, right? And now it's up to you to serve them. (laughs) So asking for shows is always not, you know, hasn't always been a good experience for me. Um, Sometimes I will get a smack in the face here and there. Sometimes I will get constructive feedback. Other times it's just outright, hey, you suck and when I hear that I just it fuels me it doesn't necessarily make me you know I am upset in the moment but 
it fuels me to do even more than what I'm doing now. I've been doing shows lately. Not a lot, but I've been doing shows. Because like I stated, I want to provide as an entertainer not only my consistency, but quality work. Because they, t they tell you when, you know, people say that one performance can change your entire life. And I strongly believe that as well. People, audience members, will remember a grand, crisp performance. A, you worked your ass off, you're sweating, you know, Sweat and tears, sometimes it gets to that. You're, you know, moving. You're really putting on facial expressions, a solid, they will remember a solid quality performance. That's what people want to remember, and that's what they will. People will also remember that if you are the guy who's known to just wing it and fuck around on stage when you have a mic they're gonna see that and they're not gonna want to see that again because as even for me as an audience member i like seeing other comedians do their stuff i do not like seeing half-assed work i give the full ass i have notebook I'm writing my stuff out i'm rehearsing you know whether it's in my room or i'm rehearsing out apart you know just alone by myself getting the rhythm right again getting that spice the ingredients for my enchiladas you know quality over consistency in my opinion you can go to every show possible it doesn't make you a great performer, in my opinion. Sometimes it's a hit or miss. We all have our highs and we all have our lows. I'm not saying if you do a bunch of shows, you suck. I'm just saying that if you're not putting your best foot forward every single one of those shows, you're going to fall off. And, you know, when I do get a car, I'm gonna do as much shows as I possibly can, but I'm not gonna do an over excessive amount to where it's a lot on me as a performer, because I still wanna be not only mentally prepared, but I want to give a quality performance. So, in simple, asking for shows isn't a crazy topic. It's not it's not crazy to ask for a show. It's just I guess where I'm at and I'm trying to only speak about me because this is the show where I'm going to show how I get from point A to point B, right? And hopefully, you know, go on every letter and finally reach the point why I'm just up here and I'm, I'm great. But I do want to provide quality over quantity. And I think other people would agree that quality work is more remembered um, than being absolute shit. <laughs> And I can assure you where I'm coming from, I am not absolute shit. I'm going to take the time to write out solid jokes, whether it's in the form of a one liner, whether it's in the form of a story, and work on it to not only make people laugh, but to establish my presence and have my work actually show for itself so I can be the person 
where people look at me and they're like, that's the guy who did this thing. And I like that. I like that about him. I like that he's prepared. I like that he doesn't bring a notebook on stage. I like that he takes care of himself. He does his hair. He smells good. He wipes his ass. I like that about him. So 